Well, hello there, and welcome back to the second edition of this new channel, 5.3 PO, where it's all about uh, rebuilding a 5.3 liter motor for my Chevy Suburban with absolutely no experience. So, um, so this is the second edition. Uh, welcome back for the and thank you for subscribing. So uh, I thought what we'd do in the second edition is to talk a little bit about the motor that I'm rebuilding. You might recall in my welcome and introduction video, I talked about how I'm rebuilding a motor uh, while not the motor that's in the vehicle, but a separate motor that I picked up uh, from a wrecked Suburban. So this is a 2008 Suburban I'm working on. I want to replace that motor eventually. And uh, so what I did was I shopped around. I found myself a... Uh, a used uh, Suburban engine, a 5.3 liter. Now this is an LC9 motor that I'm working on. So I was very particular in looking and locating and finding an LC9. What I, uh, you know, after a couple weeks, maybe a couple months of searching, I finally came across a used um, a 2010 uh, version of, of the LC9 motor um, to go into my 2008 Suburban. It's the same motor, LC9. Um, the only difference is the 2010 version has the variable valve train, which I'm going to eventually get the delete kit and remove that so that uh, it'll go into my 2008 with no problem. So, uh, so anyway, I, uh, when I purchased that, that engine, um, you know, it was a couple hundred miles away. I had to take a nice day, day trip. Um, I went and picked it up with my Suburban. Of course, you might remember my Suburban's still running, so I'm trying to get this motor uh, that I've got uh, torn down and rebuilt and have it ready to go so that you know when the, the current motor dies i'll have something ready to go but anyway i went and i picked it up uh, uh pulled a, a utility trailer behind me and um uh brought it home and got it on the engine stand so that's what this edition this second edition is all about talking about uh, my experience with having well actually no experience uh managing to get the motor off the trailer and onto the engine stand using a shop crane. So with that, uh, let's get to that video. And thanks again for joining. And again, be sure to subscribe to make sure you catch all my installments, which I'll try to get here uh, a new one at least once every day or every other day as you follow along in my journey uh, of rebuilding this motor. Okay, it's recording. See? All right. <laughs> it's recording. See, the good, unfortunately, I can edit. So I can edit all this out. So anyway, so here's the deal with this motor. So <clears throat> I've, all of this is new. So I managed to get a new crane at Harbor Freight fairly inexpensively, about 150 bucks on sale. And here's the 5.3, the way I transferred, uh, tr um, transported it on the trailer on this tire. I already removed the ratchet straps. So, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but through my research I've done online and through some books, this is kind of what I came up with on how to do this. So, first of all, uh, follow me here, my camera person. So my first thing was, how am I going to lift this off the trailer? Well, obviously I got this crane here. Well, I need to connect a chain to it. So I did some research on hoisting and connection points to lift a 5.3 motor. And there's all kinds of different ways and places you can lift a motor. So I needed something to connect it to. So I bought one of these here at a local parts store. And guess what? Because I'm leaving all of the accessories on the motor and it's not just the block, this chain is not long enough. It's only 24 inches long. So if you're tempted to use, buy one of these for a, a hoisting point, forget it. It ain't gonna be long enough. So I went to Lowe's and I bought six feet of this chain here, heavy chain. And uh, obviously, well, not necessarily obviously, but apparently these five threes have a bunch of lifting and hoisting points on various places of the motor. So here, hand me the camera and I'll do some filming here. So one, one lifting point is a hole here on the, uh, there's two of them, and there's a whole bunch of them, but here's one, and here's another one that I ended up uh, going to. 
Um, and I just put a series of their um, M10 metric bolts. And I put some washers and, and they're longer. They're, the bolts I got were like, I don't know, a couple inches long. So to take up some of this space, I used some washers. And then the other end, I went to the opposite side, to the back of one of the other heads, and same same deal here. These various bolts. It looks like there's a lift plate already on here, um, but I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to go to the head. So anyway, I'm look just about ready to lift this thing up. Um, and then I thought, well, how am I going to get this on the stand? All right, so... One video I watched on YouTube was a video that suggested to take this mounting plate off of the stand and bolt it to the back of the motor ahead of time. And it's a lot easier to put this into that hollow, you know, that thing right there than it would be to try to hang this motor and bolt these up. So anyway, where I ended up bolting it to, um, I wanted to try to make it even so that there's even weight distribution. And I just bolted it into, these are 90 millimeter long M10 bolts, by the way, grade eight, um, or 10.9, whatever they call it, with some washers and stuff to take up the space. And there's these mount, there's these holes that the uh, um, transmission bolt to. So all I'm using are these holes that the transmission would bolt to in the in the back of the motor. And I left this flywheel on here, although I toyed with the idea of taking this off first. But I thought, well, what the heck, I'll go ahead and uh, leave that on. So anyway, you leave these bolts here loose, and then you move these arms around until you find a way to make this up to the transmission bolt holes. And then once I bolted these in place, then I tightened these down here. All right. So with that, that's how I'm ready to begin lifting this thing and getting it onto the engine stand. That's our goal today is to get this thing off my trailer because I need this trailer out of the garage and get this thing onto the stand. All right, so I'm going to pause. All right, is the numbers accumulating? All right. Here, come on around here just for a second. So, so we're going to go ahead and lift this, pump this up to lift it up. All right. All right, now you can... Uh, all right, so... Now we're going to bring the stand to the motor. And the idea here is to is to lower it slowly. Very slowly. Tell me. Are you still watching this? Alright, I need one of my helpers here to tell me when 
that black tube and that red tube are at the same level. Okay? Okay. So just tell me how far to lower it. Remember, I'm a beginner here. This is the first time I've ever loaded an engine onto a stand. So bear with me here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick the handle in here and put the little handy thing here, the little handle grip onto this handle that prevents the handle from coming out. And then there's a little lock pin here that I can put on here that will prevent it from spinning. So essentially I've got it on the stand. So the engine clearly it's being supported by the stand is just as loose. So I'm just going to push the stand back away so I can get this looseness. Here, come on back around here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and remove. So it's disconnected from the crane. Simply relying upon the engine stand to hold the hold the motor. And we're making sure that all the bolts, nothing's stripping, they're coming out of here, and all the bolts are holding as intended. Alright. So, so that's how you transfer, or that's how I transferred anyway, the motor off the trailer, lifted it by the crane onto the engine stand, all right? If I can do it, hell, anybody can do it. <laughs> Cut.